Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match, this time once again between Jay Raccoon and QAI, but now on Cataclysm Ridge. This is, of course, the new name for Hills, so it looks if it looks familiar, that's because it is. Jay Raccoon going for Grecum very quickly, randoming into Grecum. QAI choosing Grecum instead. So both players playing Grecum, and we'll see how they handle. So the last game we saw that QAI went for a very powerful 4 Octo Rush, and won within 5 minutes. I don't think their present even settled before the game was over. That was how decisive it was. Very much unexpected. I mean, Void Platform, while large map, is not so large that you can just be totally foolish with the way you place everything. And you do have to worry about making sure that you have some defenses set up. As an open map, it's a map with the bases fairly close together. Rushes like that can work. Cataclysm Ridge might be like that. Hills definitely was like that because of the ramp over on the west and east side of the bases. The ramp towards the center here. But because that's been removed, it's going to be a lot harder for rushes like that to become useful. They're still going to be quite useful. I mean, it's not impossible. This is still a tiny... This is still a fairly small map. Not tiny, but fairly small. However, rushes are going to be harder to pull off because the fastest path is either going to be up and around in this back choke point, which is fairly easy to defend, or winding along the center into the big ramp at the bottom, or south of the west east base and north of the west base. So QAI is setting up, setting up more for economy now, getting an Octo on one R, well, on RP in his main base, one RP in his expansion, and J Raccoon is setting himself up as well, getting two RPs in his main base. Actually, three RPs in his main base, we already saw this, kind of think of it. QAI, however, he does have more RPs in his expansion than his main base, or equal amount, but it looks like he is definitely... He's definitely confident he can hold that expansion from the very start. Which is a little bit curious, and apparently Kronheimer pointing out that the 4 Octo Rush actually works very well on pretty much any map smaller than Cordova, which is the largest 1v1 map, and frankly I think a little bit too large for 1v1, but... That's not entirely surprising, however... I'm kind of curious to see. I, I'm sure there's a good counter to it for everyone. I very much like to see what it is. Probably for Grekum. An early Octopod probably would do the trick. I mean, for CISO, really, J. Raccoon is focusing very heavily on economy and getting up his production. So that was kind of hard to say what that was actually going to be like. I think CISO probably would just be able to get away with hmm, a few ATHCs, I think. No, it's hard to say. Octos are fairly powerful, they're actually quite fast, they have fairly powerful melee weapons, and they were buffed in the last version too. And they got a small attack buff, because everyone got attack range and sight range buffs in version 1.4, and Octos therefore got damage buffs because they're melee range, they can't actually get a, main, a range buff of any meaning. Not sure if that caused this 4 Octo Rush thing though. Seems like it might have been, though I wouldn't be surprised if it was something that had been being done before version 1.4. However, I have not really seen it. It hasn't really come up in the replays that have casted, which is very surprising. So both players just setting themselves up, trying to get themselves... Ah, Jerry can get himself an early octopod for defense, and QAI continuing to build up economy from the looks of it. He is... Well, he's getting another octo, getting... Possibly a full triad for Progen. And nope, setting up another Octo. He might be going for the 4 Octo Rush again. A little bit of a later rush than before, though. The Octopod still would be vulnerable, but if Octos came off for J Raccoon, he would be able to defend against this, and it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be the biggest problem. He does have an Octo set up, he does have an Octopod set up, probably gonna have both on patrol. So that will help, but that's not gonna be enough, I don't think. Octo two octos will beat an octopod barely, so four octos would be able to just rip an octopod to shreds without any problems. Probably lose one of their rank, maybe. However, six octos, six octos coming up. QEI really either getting into this or very focused on defense, but I'm sure he's going to go for the assault once he gets the chance. However, Jericoon, well, he had set up with an octo dealing a lot of damage, but this is going to do nothing. This is already being wiped off the timeline. As you can see by the blue time wave here, so not a concern, but no, it appears that QAI might be going just for economy with this stuff. Like defense into economy rather than going straight for offense. He is getting his Q Plasma RP set up, and 
that's a good sign that he's not actually going for an offensive strategy with this. But Jay Raccoon sending over another Octo... Oh, sorry, this is from the future. This is the first Octo that we saw that's been echoed out. Don't worry about it. It's not actually happening. QAI, on the other hand, does have an Octo set up to defend. He has more Octos setting up for possibly defense. One of them set up for Progeneration. So he's getting his Reef up, but... Focus seems to be defense. I I don't think he's going to go for any offensive moves with those Oct Octos anymore. Just after that 4 Octo rush, it's hard to know what to expect from that. And j Raccoon's sending in his Octo, just to make sure nothing was in this north northeast base. And then from there, going to attack QAI once again. Probably will find this expansion here, though. Actually, given his path, he might go through the back door. And end up not finding the expansion towards the front. So QAI might actually have this expansion pay off quite well. j Raccoon getting advanced structures of his own, and QAI... Should also be getting advanced structures fairly soon, getting his reef up. Once that's done, he can easily get advanced structures. He has the money for it. He's rolling in dough, actually. He's, he's still got two options for defense on top of all these RPs he's built up. j on the other hand, has about the same number of RPs. One fewer QP RP from the looks of it. But with the greater number of octs the QAI has, he can more easily transition into economy. And QAI does have his Octo set up to defend, so Jericho's Octo coming in will be torn to shreds, not even being able to see this front expansion here, just getting torn apart by the Octos that were already here. So that's gotta be annoying for Jericho, not being able to really see what's going on. I'm not sure if he's aware of that expansion, but he might be suspicious of it. Certainly doesn't see an expansion over in the southwest corner of the map. So it looks like QAI just setting himself up for a slightly long-term economy game. Setting his Octos to attack, but this is likely more of a harassment attack rather than anything meaningful. Like any major attack that he's actually trying to win the game with. A bit surprised he hasn't got advanced structures though. Is he is he just trying to get Chronoport in from that? He's floating a lot of cash. Jaragoon, however, does have his advanced structures all set up. He has he can easily get a spire if he wishes. Or domes if he wanted to. I don't know why he would, but spire definitely. Spire would be something I'd expect very soon. However, I don't see it. He appears to be trying to... He's building more RPs, but not actually building up anything else. So at this point, Jericoon is slightly ahead of economy. Both players are actually very near the present. QEI, this is where he has his Octos moving in, but I don't... I'm surprised he hasn't gone advanced structures yet. What? I don't know what he's waiting for. He definitely has the money for it. He has the money for that and chronoporting if he wants to. Jumping back to the 535 mark, going back two minutes, and still not getting... Research. Why is he not teching up? It's very bizarre. Jericho, on the other hand, actually... There we go. There's the Spire. I was going to say actually building a dome, but no, that is in fact a Spire. Will have his air units coming up. Should have a Farpod very shortly. And there we go. There it is. Farpod being built up, and QAI, on the other hand, not doing much of anything with his money. And Jericho actually has a proxy dome. Oh, wow. I wonder if he's trying to go for a beam with that, or if he's just going to go for floating it in, or what exactly his plan is. But he is certainly going to prevent this expansion from being used. However, it's too late. The main expansion QAI has is the natural north of his base. North of his main base. And QAI here is his Octos coming in. The Octopod will try to defend. Actually, might actually have a range advantage. Might be able to take him out just because of how far away it was. With the Faro support, it should be enough. The Octos not even going for the Octopod, going for the Faro instead. And one of them going down before dealing any damage. The second one... Actually, neither of them looks like they're planning to deal damage. They're both going for scouting for information. He wants to see what Jericho is up to, but not seeing that Faropod, just barely not seeing the Faropod, or it would be. If he goes back slightly, he should see the Faropod. There we go. Now he is, he is definitely aware of the Faropod coming up. So, is he going to build advanced structures now? Is he going to build Seppies or what? He does have advanced structures. Never mind. He has actually gone back and built advanced structures. So, we're good on that one. He does have his tech partially going. He needs to go back, get Spire, get some air units. He has tons of money to do this with. Get a couple of Pods. he'll be able to have no problem getting rid of the Farapod that Jericoon had set up. However, Jericoon is using that Farap... Where's the Farapod? There it isn't. There it is! Farapod set up for finding this expansion, getting rid of it. So that will work out very nicely. So Jericoon, having gotten rid of that expansion pretty well, QAI is going to have to set himself up. He, he has it legal class as well now, but he doesn't even have a spire yet. I'm not sure what he's planning on doing with this, why he has not built up a spire. 
while Jerry-Kun dealing a lot of damage to the expansion over in the south here. So Noctobot coming up, I I don't know, Sebi Leo's maybe, but like I said, he's going to need a Spire, he's going to need a Faropod if he does that. And even then, he does have the money for it, but only slightly. He's going to run out fairly soon. QEI, his Octos that were scouting out, distracting the Faropod, moving it away from the expansion. Jerikun not finishing it off. So there's still one RP on QP that's able to harvest. So QEI hasn't been completely undermined, but still has lost a couple RPs in that expansion, which is going to be quite important. However, the dome down here has either not yet been built or isn't being built. Jerikun has aborted it, from the looks of it, or gotten undermined himself. He might have undermined himself by building too much in the past, I'm not certain. But he doesn't have the dome over here, that's for sure. And he is getting chronoporting, I think that's probably what happened. He built the chronoporting and that undermined the dome construction. Which means he doesn't have an easy way of blocking out expansion to the southwest from QAI. However, he does still have the Octo there, which means any Octo's coming down he'll be aware of, if nothing else. But now Jerakun fixing that distraction and obliterating QAI's natural expansion. That is... That is going to be... Well, there's Spire up, and there is going to be air units very soon. And here goes the Faropod as well, like I said, this Faropod that Jerakun had set up. Jerakun looks like he's building another Faropod further in the future as well, so he does have a couple of Faropods coming up. Like I said, I don't know what QAI is planning with this. He does have a Spire up, but he doesn't have any other air units going. He does have Legal Class, but he doesn't have any Faropods or Sepipods to actually make Legal Class units with. So I don't see how that's going to work. This... He does have a couple of to try to defend the Faropod. That might help, but he can't actually see the Faropod. So I'm not sure what QAI is planning here. He, I don't know if he's even aware that he needs Sepipods or Faros to see the Faropod in the first place. I'm not sure how many games he's played up to this point. Like I said, he is a bit of a newer player. He was doing very well. Here's a Sepipod, however, so he will be able to finish this Faropod off and get rid of it. Eventually, at the very least. And J-Raccoon, on the other hand, has not much more coming at this point. He's probably... This is the saving up for the Chrono Porting that he was doing before. So that's going to be... Once he has the Chrono Porting up, that's going to be quite powerful. However, he got, does need to get that up. And he does have a Faropod as well, further in the future that he built up already, which is likely to Chrono Port back. And Octo here, fighting off an Octopod, but getting destroyed. The Octopod will be half the health once done, but the Reefs will be able to heal it up in time before any other, or should say in time for any other attacks that QAI might send. Which he is not, however. QAI is focused more on defense, getting the heavy pods up, and heavy pods will be useful, but not when they are now. He doesn't actually have himself with the best time. It's going to be rather problematic once Crime, or once Jericoon sends back units, Crime not in the game. I don't know why I even mentioned him. Watching him in the chat right now, actually, that's probably why. But... Farpod's coming up for QAI. He will be able to well, deal some damage if he pushes forward with it. Jericho not really setting up much defense, mostly setting up his Farpods and going for a Farpod Chrono Rush. I'm sorry, not Chrono Rush. Farpod Uppercut Attack. It's too late for it to be a Chrono Rush, but it's Uppercut Attack to deal with this expansion. Try to undermine QAI just that much more. Though he's already dealt quite a bit of damage to QAI, and QAI already had a bunch of resources in the bank. So I don't see this being particularly problematic. But another Faropod coming into the main base. This is going to be a much bigger deal. Jericho looks like he's sending this back to Chronoport. This is going to be pretty much impossible for QAI to deal with. He doesn't have anything set up for it. He is, however, getting Sepi Legos. He is prepped up for that further in the future. He does have a Sepi Le or Octoligos, no. Not Sepi Legos, interesting. So we're getting an Octoligo. But this is a little late. The Faropod, however, getting distracted by the by the progenerating pod class triad. Getting rid of the Sepi Pod on the ground. And QAI, his Octoligo taking some damage, but... No, actually, the Octoligo was on the verge of death. However, Chronoport it back. Faropod will be torn apart by Sepipods before able to deal any damage. That was embarrassing. So I was thinking he's going to actually get back in time and deal some damage. Chronoporting here, most likely, to try to be in a better position. But even then, that doesn't work, so... Nothing he's trying to do is actually going to be effective here. Unless he Chronoports from right this position. If he Chronoports from exactly this position, he should be fine. And yes, he's doing exactly that. And he is exactly fine. He's actually be able to get rid of the second pods before they're born. Or before they mature, I should say. So that will be very powerful. I think QA is going to... I don't know if QA is going to be able to recover from that one. He's lost... He's losing this expansion to the north. He's losing his main base, or getting his main base heavily damaged. 
and he doesn't really have anything to deal with that. And the units that just get, got rid of that Faropod are themselves going to be destroyed before they're even finished growing up. So I don't know how QA is going to be able to deal with this. I think he may have lost this game completely. And, like I said, there goes Jericoon's Faropod. And what else is there? Jericoon should have more units coming up. He definitely has the money for units coming up. He has a bunch of Octos, and those are probably going to be used for expansion. Probably not going to be used... No, they're going to be used for a direct attack! He is actually going straight for an attack on the southwest base, thinking there's something going to be there. Might go for a backdoor assault, but this is rather surprising, actually. QAI about to encounter that Faropod Chronoport, and... No, the Faropod Chronoport getting aborted. Jericoon actually losing that Faropod Chronoport. That's quite surprising, in fact. QAI probably will be... No, is he... Did he echo that out? I don't see why I would have echoed that out, but I don't... There's a Faropod over here, and where's the other Faropod? I don't see it. No, I don't... I do not see that Faropod that he sent back in time. So, QAI will be losing a lot, but I think this is actually going to be in his favor. I'm not sure if it's a paradox or what, but... Yeah, he's actually... He's actually survived that. So there's no real damage being dealt as a result of that Chronoport. And it looks like... Yeah, here's the... Here's the Faropod that had assaulted him. Dealing with damage it can, but... No, this has to have Chronoport back. And we're looking further in the future, looking past the Green Time. So QAI... No, it looks like he actually did take a lot of damage from the Faropod. That was rather surprising. The Green Time was supposed to have propagated that, but yeah, that... Perhaps he's just rebuilt in the meantime. No, he hasn't. He actually hasn't built up anything. Uh, how bizarre. Okay, so we do have confirmed, however, that the Faropod did deal the damage it was meant to deal, but it looks like it may not have permanently dealt that damage, that the damage in question is, in fact, paradoxed out. Because I don't see the Chronoport being permanent, and... Jeragoon really committed to attacking that southwest, even though QAI has not used it at all this game, ever. I mean, Jeragoon has used his, but QAI hasn't used his own. Which, I suppose, is kind of unusual. Hills, when it was Hills, this was a much more popular expansion. Just because of the fact that it was... This is kind of the point where you had to defend to defend everything, since there was a ramp here, and then there was the expansion down here, and your main base up here, and it was close together. But now that this is much more the main choke point, with this being kind of a secondary choke point. The change isn't surprising with QAI, what he's planning on doing. But Jericoon trying to prevent this expansion from happening at all, doesn't really matter though. QAI was more committed to the north base when he had it, and probably going to be committed to that again if he goes back to make another expansion. Right now, however, he has to reassert map control, and probably get himself up more pod, or more legal class units, set up his pods again, so he can actually deal with this. That being said, the blue time wave looks like there might be some damage that's not being dealt on that time wave. Jericoon double checking, and no, the damage is being dealt. The Chronoport did successfully occur. So, this Faropod dealing with the damage it can, and actually dealing quite a bit of damage. So, QAI getting rid of that Faropod, but another Faropod coming down will also take some damage, but able to get rid of this Pod Class Triad, and QAI running still has a fair amount of money. He's running well with the money he has in the bank, but he has very little income, while Jericoon actually has quite a lot of income, and also has a very healthy bank account. Way too healthy, in fact. He really needs to spend more money. It's lots more money. Getting legal class and then building up from there would be a very good idea right about now. And getting far legos and sippy legos and going from there, that would spend his money. Or just a bunch of pod class units, a bunch of far pods and sippy pods. That would do it as well. QA, however, the only one who has actually focused on legal class, but he does not have the money to buy legal class units right now. No LC to get them with. He can convert the QP he has to LC and then from there build up, but otherwise. I don't see how that's going to work out. And there he is, rebuilding his main base economy, but right now, Jericoon really just has to swoop in and attack. That's all it comes down to. If Jericoon attacks, he wins. And he is setting up a ton of base class units to attack with, but he hasn't actually gone out and done the attack yet. He's... I'm not sure what he's waiting for. Maybe he's being sporting about it? I'm not certain. But I do know that he can win from here. Without any problem. If he... If he attacks, he's won. And really, this is the sort of situation where if, you've, if you're going to win by attacking, it's best to attack as soon as possible. Because the later you attack, the more likely your opponent will have rebuilt themselves and thus been in, in, just put themselves in a position where they can actually fight back and possibly come back. And if you're in a position to win, that's not something you want to have happen. You just want to win. So Jericho, I'm a little bit surprised at his actions, but it looks like he may in fact be planning on chronoporting back all of these units 
which would explain the amount of money in the bank he had. So he appears to be actually going for an uppercut with all this. Yes, that's exactly what he's doing. Not just an uppercut, he's going for an uppercut where he's attacking with the units and their doubles. Going for a very powerful assault. And losing a handful of units in the process. But those are the clones from after the Corona Force, so they should be fine. I mean, okay, it's a bit annoying for that eunuch knowing that they're going to die. Knowing that their days are numbered and their fate has been sealed, but... At the very least, the assault wins, so... Hey, he's won. QEI has no way of getting back in this game right now. And that's it, so QEI has surrendered. And that is the game. There'll be one more game after this, and... So just stay tuned for that. And I will see you then. Once QA actually, you know, hit surrender. But yeah, that's kind of cool. Chrono Clone Uppercut. I've... That happens rarely. I like to see that, but I don't see that enough. So wait, did he double that over? No, he didn't double that over. I thought he doubled that over, so he was hitting with doubly Chrono Cloned Army. So getting to the end, when all the Chrono Clone goes off, and then Chrono, Chrono Cloning them back once again. Uh, I'm kind of pointing out that Grekum do not care about death. They do not fear death, I guess. I suppose Crime would know most about Grekum's psychology. It, I don't know. But that is... That's the game. And... Very interesting, though. I mean, QII did have a nice expansion there. It just... Really? I think this game happened before the Void Platform game, where we just went for the Octo Rush and attacked from there. That seems the only thing that makes sense. Although it looks like the Chronoport is actually occurring right inside of QAI's base the second time around. Jericho appears to be trying to get back to when he to where he was when he originally did the Chronoport, but no, that's gonna be interesting. Although, like I said, QAI pretty much has already surrendered. And he's lost either way. I mean, it doesn't matter what happens. He's He has been defeated completely. I'm a little bit surprised he hasn't actually hit the surrender button yet. I'm not totally surprised. Oftentimes newer players don't realize that hitting surrender is the polite thing to do. Because it is polite to surrender. If you, it's not polite to make your opponent kill everything and then wait for it to fall off the timeline. That's... You may think that they want to get the satisfaction of destroying you, but no, they just want to get on to the next game. They don't care to kill every last one of the things that you have. But it doesn't matter, the destruction will fall off the timeline. Anyway, we know who's won, so I will be back in a moment, and just see you then.